Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. My name is Taylor and today I'm going to be placing this, which is the Corsair H150i LCD inside the Fractal Design Torrent. And I'm going to be taking out the stock cooler that I have on my 3700X, the Ryzen 7. This is the stock cooler that comes with it. It's an just RGB uh, air cooler from AMD. I'm going to re be replacing this with the Corsair and just seeing how much of a difference it makes. The 3700 isn't exactly an insane CPU compared to the latest CPUs that are out there now, like Intel that gets super hot. So I'm just curious to see what kind of effects something like this has on a 3700. And you know, it's just a good investment. If I get a more powerful processor down the line, then you know, this thing should be able to cool it, no problem. So let's go ahead and test some games with the stock cooler. Then I'm going to install it. And then we're gonna test some games with it installed in various profile settings. So let's check it out. Let's start the comparison here with the stock cooler. I'm gonna try out some games with the stock cooler and then we'll go back and compare once the liquid cooler is installed and we'll see if there really is that big of a temperature difference. So I'm gonna go ahead and fire up some various games and see how just the stock cooler does so we have kind of like a control. All right, here I've just loaded up a game of Battlefield and it's just getting warmed up. I have the graph over there and right now the GPU is climbing and it looks like the CPU is leveled out. So the CPU is, is at 59 degrees Celsius and the GPU is at 63 degrees Celsius and climbing. Okay, so after a few minutes, it looks like we've settled at 59 degrees Celsius. The GPU is about maxed out. It's running an RTX 2080 and we're at 1440p and the GPU is topping out around 72 degrees Celsius. So that's not bad. We're running at 4175 megahertz. Yeah, this isn't bad. Let's see how another game performs. All right, now I'm in a game of Call of Duty Vanguard. So let's see what we got here. Looks like we're starting out with a CPU temperature of 54 degrees Celsius and GPU is at 70. And I seem to be trapped inside a building. Where the heck did I spawn? After about five minutes of Call of Duty, we're sitting at about 56 degrees Celsius on the CPU. And you can see the GPU is absolutely maxed out. Like we're at 99% and the CPU is at 42, 43. Interestingly, it looks like Call of Duty is running at a higher clock speed than Battlefield. So I'm curious to see how much of a difference the liquid cooler is gonna make. All right, let's move on to the next game. The last game that I've loaded up here is Doom Eternal. And I wanted to try out this game because it is running on a different graphics API. It's running on Vulkan instead of DirectX. So let's see how this performs. Right out of the gate, we are at 55 degrees Celsius on the CPU, 72 on the GPU, which is pretty consistent with what we've seen so far. Okay, and after a while, it looks like we are hovering around 55 degrees Celsius. It's not getting any hotter. And again, our GPU is maxed out. Our CPU is running at about half. And it's running at about 4,200 megahertz, which is also higher than uh, Battlefield was. So 55 degrees Celsius, this isn't bad at all. Um, so I'm curious to see what kind of performance boost we're gonna get with the liquid cooler. All right. Uh, that's it for the air-cooled games. Now let's move on to get that liquid cooler installed. So those are all the games and how they performed on the air cooler. Not bad, honestly. I was expecting uh, a little worse. I really haven't paid too much attention to the temperatures with just air-cooled and the stock cooler. But now let's slap on that liquid cooler and see if we get any kind of performance improvement or any kind of temperature improvement. All right, we got the box here and we're gonna begin 
putting this into the system. Let's check it out. Okay, wow, that was a bit of a challenge. Had to kind of make sure these lined up, so I had to do some adjustments, had to make sure the cables were all going in there, but I got those three fans installed. I think next will be to put this on the CPU socket. Here ring. This does have Yeah, there we go. Okay. So we just gotta like put it. So this is where I'm at right now. Just a whole bunch of RGB cables laying around. Got the cooler installed, and I'll do the, the peel. Okay, there it is, there's the LCD. So now if I go to the back, we got this whole mess here. And now the fun part. Did all this work? Okay, hang on, hang on. Let me go to this side, and uh, y'all will see, y'all will be the first ones to see, but I'm gonna hit this power button. I mean, actually I can see right here, but let's see if everything worked. Oh dang, I heard the pump fire up. We got our fans going down here. It says something there. Did I miss bias? I may have missed bias. This one's going. Well, I guess everything's working. Okay. Well, now let's uh, get into Windows, get into the software. Obviously, you gotta put some things back together there, and then let's test some games. And here it is, all set up. I have the H150i installed in the system, got the Corsair IQ software going on the computer, and I have everything set to balance, like all three fans and the pump. They're all set to balance. Now I'm gonna hop into those same three games, try them out, and then I wanna bump it up to extreme and then try those two games again and see if there are any noticeable difference between the stock cooler, the balance preset, and the extreme preset. So let's check that out. We are hopping directly into a game and initially our CPU temperature is at 55 degrees Celsius with the GPU at 54. GPU is climbing obviously because that's the hottest one. Yeah, there's those numbers you can see and compare those to what we were getting on the slot cooler. Yeah, that's pretty good. Okay, now we're at 55, still pretty cool. Okay, now let's move on to the next game. Okay, so after playing a bit of Call of Duty, seeing the same thing really, a lower temperature, 52 degrees Celsius and a higher clock speed. This time we're at 4250 and 4275, somewhere in between there. 
which is higher than the stock cooler. And of course our temperature 52 is a lot lower than our stock cooler. Our stock cooler was around 60 on this game. So it seems like what we've done is alleviated the, the throttling that happens on the CPU. So now the CPU has more room to breathe. It can run at a higher clock speed, lower temperature. I don't really know if it's having an impact on frames per second. I really don't think so because our GPU is still running at 98, 99%. Our GPU is pretty much the bottleneck here. But this definitely pairs very nicely with the, the CPU. The CPU is loving these cold temperatures. Okay, let's go on to the last game, which is Doom, and see how Doom runs. All right, here we are, we've loaded up Doom. We're in the same map area, so we're getting the same experience that we were on the stock cooler. And we're running at 50 degrees Celsius and between 4250 and 4275 on the CPU clock speed, just like we saw in Call of Duty. Yeah, that's that's really awesome. Now we're now we're at 49, so we're actually getting cooler. So right around 50 degrees Celsius. That's a pretty large improvement. That's like 10 degrees cooler and plus we're getting more clock speed okay so now let's m go to the extreme setting on the cooler and see if that makes any difference in games as well okay now i'm back in battlefield we have all the fan settings set to extreme the pump is set to extreme and it looks like we have even further reduced temperatures and we're getting between 4250 and 4275 which is a 25 megahertz bump in clock speed too so our cpu temperatures are lower and the cpu is also able to pump more speed into the system because it just has that thermal headroom that's pretty awesome i wasn't expecting it to be a shift in temperature as well as a shift in the clock speed that the system can run in during gaming. So that is pretty interesting. Now let's go ahead and jump into Call of Duty and see if we have any performance gain there going from balance to extreme. All right, now we're in Call of Duty on the extreme settings. And it looks like we're hovering uh, 51 degrees Celsius. And again, we're going from 4250 to 4275 megahertz, which is similar to what we saw on the balance setting. Although I don't think we were getting as low of temperatures because now we're between 50 and 51. So a little bit of an improvement in temperature and we're hovering around the same clock speed. Although I do notice that it stays at 4275 a lot longer than it does than uh, what was in the balance setting. So it just, it loves this cooler. It's just making the CPU run at its optimum speed here. Again, I don't think there's much improvement in frame rate because our GPU is the bottleneck. We're still pretty much maxing that out. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to Doom and see if we get any improvement there at all. All right, here we are, same map again. And we're at 48 degrees Celsius. That's about two degrees less than what we had on balance, I think. I think we we're getting like 50 degrees Celsius and we are between uh, 4250 and 4275 megahertz with it being more on that 4275 megahertz side. So it's just pumping more speed into it at a lower temperature, which is what we've seen in the previous two games. Now we're at 47 degrees Celsius. Okay, that's getting pretty chilly. So yeah, that extreme setting, it 
makes a difference, although it is much more audible. Um, the fans are spinning faster, the pump is working harder, but I'd say it definitely makes a difference here. Yeah, 48. It's getting cooler. So let's wrap this up and get final thoughts on the difference between the stock cooling gaming experience on this 3700X and the experience with this Corsair H150i. I also ran PC Mark 10 and here are the scores. So the, the 6345 is the stock cooler, which was ran on the fifth. The 6501 is the balanced mode, which was also run on the fifth. And then the 6623 is the extreme mode, which was ran today on the sixth. So just ignore this number and you can see the difference there. What did we learn from all this? So I've compiled a chart of the temperatures, which should be on screen now. And you can see the difference between the stock cooler, the balance mode and the extreme mode. And there isn't a huge temperature difference, nothing crazy like 10 degrees or 15 degrees. But I think what's more interesting is the clock speed, which is on the screen now you can see this chart that shows the clock speeds at those different coolers and how they increase with they increase significantly with the h150i and both those together i think really paints a picture of what's going on here the h150i is just able to let that 3700x just breathe a lot more get the full runway of performance out of it and the, while it doesn't really have a direct impact on games because I'm running a 2080, which is an older card and most games are bottlenecked, it's still pretty interesting to see. And I honestly wasn't expecting these results. So let me know what you th thought of these results. Did you find this helpful? Did you find it entertaining? Uh, let me know in the comments below and I can definitely do more videos like this with this H150i. Uh, if you liked the video, leave a like. And if you wanna see more content like this, please leave a subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.